And welcome to everybody on KKYN this morning, 106.9 out of Plainview and 96.5 KKNM out of Friona. Want to say a special good morning to a bunch of guys, and I'm hoping some girls by now, who we know join us every week in the Hell County Jail. And uh, we're so glad to have you guys a part of this. And some of you, Sally and I, missed last Thursday as they broke you up into two groups, and we only got to meet with half of you, but we had a great service. And uh, guys, i got to tell you, and you know who I'm talking to, but we're so proud of you and the changes that are coming about in your life and the truth that you're holding on to. Those of us in the church here in Hell Center welcome you and all everybody online. We're all one church together right now, and we know that we have people in Colorado and New Mexico. Uh, we have more people not here than we have here that are joining us, and uh, we're just glad that we're all together this morning as the body of Christ. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and to hear your word. Lord, I thank you that you have a living word for each of us this morning. And you've taught us, Lord, that if we will come to you seeking, we will find. So, Lord, help us come to seek the truth and to seek fulfillment in our hearts and to seek knowledge and understanding of you. As we know, this pleases you and you like to give these things to your children. Lord, we ask you to wash us clean of any foul thoughts, of any bad things that we've done or said this morning. Lord, we want to approach you clean of heart. We want to experience you and understand why we're here. Bless those that are hurting in the heart and in their bodies. Lord, we know there are so many, and there have been so many losses and so many fears that people are dealing with. But we come to you now, Lord, and we ask you for this next hour. Clear our minds, Lord, and let us listen for the Holy Spirit. We want to know you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sister Sally. I heard that amen. That was a hearty. Good morning, everybody. This has been such a beautiful day, and it's not as windy as it was yesterday. Was that not unbelievable yesterday? Whew, very windy. But we, I want to welcome everybody to Jerusalem Community Baptist Church. For those that are on their way, uh, we are on the corner of Avenue A and East 6th Street here in Hale Center. As you're going on 1914 East on 1914 um, from I-27, Avenue A is the first street just past the railroad tracks. So in case you wonder where we are, uh, Terry and I met in, uh, outside in the courtyard with the 16 men this week at the Hale County Jail. And like Terry was saying, good morning to them. It was really good to, to see them. And what a, they're gentlemen. They really are. And um, I, I, we feel so blessed to be able to be there and to be able to, um, to share the Lord with these guys. It's, it's just awesome. So thank you again to the Sheriff David Cochran and all the, the people there. They're so easy to work with. And, uh, so, and, and also for the girls that are listening on KKYN 106.9, I, I miss you guys too. And maybe this Thursday we'll be able to be there and see you all this week too. Please join us tonight at 6 o'clock for Bible study. We're in the second chapter of 2 Samuel. 2 and 2. Second <laughs> I can say it twice. 2 Samuel um, chapter 2. And then our home group is once a month still. And it will be this, uh, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, the 24th, the two days before Thanksgiving. And, and it, will, it will be at our house at 123 East 3rd Street here in Hill Center. You don't have to bring in anything, just, and you don't have to be a member of JCBC to come. So I hope you can join us. Wednesday night's Bible study will be here at 6 o'clock. We are in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We started chapter 10 uh, this last Wednesday, and um, we'll pick up there. Polly Terry will probably start back over at chapter 10. And, um, but it's really a great study also. Again, at 6 o'clock Wednesday. And then um, 5 o'clock on Saturdays, we're, because it gets dark so early now, uh, we will be having our Saturday night service at the park still uh, downtown at 5 o'clock. Hope you can join us. Bring a lawn chair. And if you can't be here, 
which I understand, like the, yesterday, it was very, very windy, and I, I was cold, but it was extremely windy last night. But you can join, always join us online on our Facebook page, which is Jerusalem Community Baptist Church on Facebook. So don't forget to go there. And then Monday through Friday, Terry hosts the five-minute prayer meeting at 7.30 a.m., 7.30 in the morning, on Zoom. And you can get set up, and um, you can always go to our website, which is www.JerusalemCommunityBaptistChurch.com. And uh, you can always go there and, and look at all the archives. And we have preachers. There's a lot of encouraging words, the prayer of the day, uh, uh, videos, songs. It's, it's a, a great site. So don't forget to go to the, um, the website. And, uh, and then, let's see, I have my, my Jesus calling I want to share today, which is, let's see, what is today? This is November, I know, November 15th, and it is also Terry's little sister's birthday. Happy birthday to Susan Martin, uh, which was Susan Wright Martin. And um, so, anyhow, she's getting close to that big half century mark. <laughs> I don't know if I should be telling that or not, but... It's, <laughs> She'll thank me, huh? <laughs> anyway, today is November 15th, and this is the Jesus Calling. If you don't have a copy of it, we have a copy that we, we want to give to you. Approach problems with a light touch. Now, this is Jesus speaking to you. Approach problems with a light touch. When your mind moves toward a problem area, you tend to focus on that situation so intensely that you lose sight of me. You pit yourself against the difficulty as if you had to conquer it immediately. Your mind gears up for battle, and your bod body becomes tense and anxious. Unless you achieve total victory, you feel defeated. There is a better way. When a problem starts to overshadow your thoughts, bring this matter to me. Talk with me about it. Look at, at it in the light of my presence. This puts some much-needed space between you and your concern, enabling you to see from my perspective. You will be surprised at the results. Sometimes you may even laugh at yourself for being so serious about something so insignificant. You will always face trouble in this life. But more importantly, you will always have me with you, helping you to handle whatever you encounter. Approach problems with a light touch, touch by viewing them in my revealing light and the two scriptures that go with this they're just so they're awesome blessed are those who learn to acclaim you who walk in the light of your presence O lord which is psalm 89 15 and the other one is john 16 33 i have told you the, these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world Amen. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. And I'm going to ask um, Ms. Karen McNeil to come and help me to, help me to, to sing. We're going to sing, um, oh, good. It Is Well With My Soul. And Sister Beverly is on the piano. And this is going to be page 339. For those inside, open your, your hymnals to page 339. It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul verse 4 and lord haste the day when the faith shall be sight the clouds be rolled back 
as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. 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 <laughs> Terry's trying to fix the door. The wind was supposed to only come, what, four miles an hour this morning. And, and they changed their mind. That's okay. We can deal with it, right? Yes, we can. I'm sorry about the static. That's me running around here. Okay, you can take, take this and you can turn that monitor down a little if okay, you want. Thank you, honey. Let me grab my Bible. At this time, we want to take up our offering and tithes. Those of you who would like to give, let's see, we don't have outdoor today, so I'm going to be preaching to a camera while my church is right here behind me. But uh, we have a couple of gentlemen who will take the place and pass, plates and pass them around. Those of you who are listening on the radio and those of you watching online, we ask that you would please support the ministry as well. We're happy to say, this sounds kind of strange, but we're happy to say that our missions have outgrown our church. And uh, I hope that it's always that way. If we get where we're filling this building up, I hope our missions are still bigger because missions are part of everybody that's involved. And the radio broadcast have expenses. The uh, online broadcasts have expenses. We also have a CD dis or DVD distribution ministry. If you know someone that doesn't have internet or radio and would like to see these, we can make DVDs for them. But we do need your support uh, if you are enjoying and being fed by the ministry. There are two ways that you can give if you're watching online or if you're listening on the radio. Please take note. Uh, the first is mail, and that's also, as Sally mentioned, the Jesus Calling devotionals. If you'd like a Jesus Calling devotional, instead of sending us money, you just request it from us at Post Office Box 112. That's JCBC, Post Office Box 112 in Hale Center, 79041, if you want a, a Bible or a Jesus Calling. If, on the other hand, you would like to help to support the ministries, you use that same address and you can send your gifts. Post Office Box 112. Hell Center, 79041. And finally, before we get going, there is a way you can text your gift, and we have a few people that utilize that, and it's, as you know, it's always fun getting money electronically. <laughs> it goes into the ministry as well. You text the word give, just write give, as though that were a message you were sending text message, and send it to this number, 833-410-0526. That's 833-410-0526. 0526, and when you text the word give, it'll come back and give you a little thing where you can put your credit card information such as that and store it, and then each week or any time you want to give, you just press in an amount and send it, and it'll go directly into the account. So thank you for that. Now I'm looking forward to sharing this word with you this morning. The title of the message is Confession and Repentance. Sadly, two things that we're not real experienced in doing like we used to at one time as a church but I think some of it some of it may just be bringing it back to your attention I believe many people would do more of the right thing if they only knew the right thing to do and what was required of them as you know uh, if you've listened to us at any time because I seem to always get this verse worked in but Romans ten seventeen says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God we need to hear these things. As I oft, often challenge, sometimes combat this saying, a lot of people like to say, well, Terry, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And that, that may have merit to it. That may be true, but I can tell you this for certain. You do need to go to church to have any kind of victory as a Christian. You can be successful. You may be relatively happy in your life, but to have victory in Jesus... To have victory in Christ as a believer, 
you have to have fellowship and you have to hear the word of God and you have to have it regularly. And you say, well, I read my Bible plenty at home. I don't go to church, but I read my Bible plenty. If you read your Bible and you hear the word of God, you know there's two ways you can read it. You can sit down and read the verses that you were going to read for today and go to work. Or you can sit down and open up this love letter and say, speak to my heart, Lord. I want to know you. If you're reading your Bible like a child of God, you will begin to start to want to go to church and be around other believers. That's just the way it works. So it's not a trick question there, but it is how it works. You've got to have the fellowship of the believers. Now, as we open up the word of God and we hear what God has to say to us, he starts to move inside and it starts to bring to life the things that he said and what's required of us. Confession and repentance are two very valuable things that we'll keep bouncing back and forth to. But the verse that we want to open up with this morning, many of you are familiar with this. Many of you could quote it. Turn with me to Romans 8, 28. Some of you are just hearing that. Romans 8, 28. You already know what it is. Romans 8, 28. From the King James Bible, listen to this. And we know, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, I've seen that on Facebook memes. I've seen it on T-shirts. I've seen it on bumper stickers, plaques, coffee cups. But there is so much in this verse that we want the Lord to speak to us this morning. Because we're going to go to a couple of other passages that will shine so many different colors of light on this verse. My prayer for you this morning is that you'll hear these verses like you've never heard them. Because listen, the Holy Spirit has a word for you. I want to tell you, as I've been, <laughs> I guess I'm just the preacher with this kind of a word. And it may be why we don't have more attendance than we have, which is God's will. But I'm the one that's been telling you for six months not to just think, hang on, it's going to get better. Because it's continually gotten worse. And we don't know what's coming. But what was our text that we started with this morning? I'll live by this. Sally and I have, as I was telling Brother Kenneth a while ago, since eight years ago, this, this just, our, our, the repentance part of confession and repentance happened. And something clicked. And we've started pouring our heart into this. And now there's a realization, and here's where your victory comes from. There's a realization that all things are working for my good. Well, Terry, how can you say that? There's been some pretty rotten things happen in your life. Because I'm not the one who planted and who knows what the end of it's supposed to look like. I trust that all things are working together. How can I trust that? You can't just take this verse Put on your t-shirt that says Romans 8, 28 and say all things are working for my good. You can't do that. You have to go back to what he said. It works together for them who are called according to his purpose and for them who love God. Now, do you remember what Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. Well, here he goes again. No, it's not that. It's just to make this work. To walk in the promises that God has for you, we've got to do what it says in each thing that it says. Take them at face value. You're a child of God. You, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You've put your faith in Christ. Now that, that's your own security. That's what you say. That's why I believe I'm going to heaven because I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my words. So here's what I'm sharing with you. And I'm not beating you and I'm not preaching this down to you this morning. I'm sharing with you that all of this, this right now, I believe with my whole heart, I'm so burdened that God wants me to get this word out any way I can do it because dark clouds continue to build on our horizon. If you read Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus was talking about the end of times and just before his return, you know yourself, if you read that, it looks like we could be getting very close. Brother will betray brother. Father will turn against son. Son will turn against father. Mother and daughters will turn against one another. That's what he said. He said the love of many will grow cold. 
He also said, when you see all of these things start to happen, this is what Jesus said. If this is what we're seeing, we don't know for sure that we're approaching the end time. But if this is what Jesus was describing, here's what he said. This is only the beginning of sorrows. Well, Terry, this is not a very comforting word. I don't know that I want to hear this. Don't turn it off now. If you go to the doctor tomorrow because you're not feeling well, and he doesn't tell you what you want to hear, but he has a cure, you better stay and hear what he has to say. And the Word of God has what you need this morning. You know, I'm going to go on and speak frankly about something that, that I, I hear danced around all of the time, and it's, it's, it's not out very often, but we just had this election that we've been, many of us have been watching with white knuckles for a long time. And it's the most polarized our nation has ever been. One side pitted directly against another, in one nation under God indivisible. That's thrown out the window. But we just had the election. Now as uncomfortable as it may be to realize, you have to understand that we're waiting on a complete formal announcement that one has won, and we're still waiting on a concession that another one hasn't, and they're refusing. They're, 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 they're trying to say uh, president-elect and president-elect and such as that, but we're still waiting on all the numbers to come in so there can be an official designation. And the whole time, we can't get a concession, which would have already been done weeks ago. What's going on? There are a lot of things going on. And if you're a Republican, you're just waiting to see Trump fight and get back in. If you're a Democrat, you're saying, what's wrong with the crazy Republicans? Why can't they see that they've lost? And we're still... Listen, what I, want you to, what I want you to hear, and it's what, something that we touched on last night in the park. If you're listening right now and you're seeking to know that God is working all things out for your good, this is a mindset that you're just going to have to come to, and I want to respectively share this with you. You've got to take that Republican, that Democrat status of yours, and it's got to get way down below your status of being a child of God. This is a Christian thing. We are called... We are called to a much higher calling. We are God's people. We are the people of God all the way back to Abraham. When God found him a people, it was through Abraham and then Isaac and then through Jacob. He had the Jewish people. Abraham even includes a lot of the, the, a lot of the Middle Easterners, a lot of the Arabs. God's people through Abraham's covenant. But then through Jacob, it, God chose his people through Jacob, whom he named Israel, we weren't no part of that. We're Gentiles. But God always had that people, and he taught us and he taught them way back then, listen, how to be his people. If we can come to an understanding, listen, that I say this a lot, but I want you to hear it in your heart. I'm a child of God, the creator. I'm, I am a child of God of Almighty God. Don't just say that flippantly. It means, I'm not afraid. I'm a child of God. The very one that spoke everything into being, listen, He watches over me. And I know He does. You know why? Because I love Him, and I'm called according to His purpose. And if you can get your heart wrapped around that and hear these two words, confession and repentance, you can start to walk in that same comfort. If this all gets overthrown and Donald Trump is the president again for four years, I'm going to find my peace in knowing that God knows what he's doing. If this turns into a concession and, Don, and, and Joe Biden becomes the president of the United States, I'm going to trust that God has got a plan and I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to submit either way. I'm told to in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, read that. It talks about the governing powers. We don't have the right to talk bad about who's in office. And this goes sideways with a lot of people. And I understand that. And I'm asking you, don't, don't turn it off right now. Just please hear me out. Bigger than the President of the United States has ever been. Bigger than the King of Egypt was. Remember that? It's God Almighty who created all things. We've got to come back and be under Him. We are the children of Almighty God. As I said last night, we're, the, we're not the tail on a political dog just being wagged anywhere. We are the children of God. We're going to be here, beloved, when all of this is smoke and cinder. 
And we're going to be in the we're going to be reigning with Jesus Christ. But the only way you're going to make it through tomorrow and get to the end of the day with any amount of peace in your heart is to start to grasp what I'm telling you and letting go of the things that are temporary. It's the only way. Turn with me now to a very familiar passage through the elections and such. Second Chronicles. Way back in your Old Testament, you got first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, and then first and second Chronicles. There. So this is the last of those six, basically like the, the Gospels to me in a lot of ways because they give three different accounts in two books each of the same type of situations in history. Second Chronicles 7.14. I'm in the wind trying to do this, so you should have time to find it on yours. 7.14, listen to this. If my people, that's us, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. That's where so many times we've stopped with the, with the, when people have used this in the different campaigns and I've, I've, just all the different places you've seen it. If they'll seek my face and pray. But he says, and turn from their wicked ways. Here's a promise. This is a promise from Almighty God. But like all promises in here, we don't like to say this, but like all promises in here, it comes after a big if. It comes after a big if. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, that includes repentance and confession, repentance and confession, and they'll seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, there's the repentance, then from heaven will I hear and I'll forgive their sin. And I'll heal their land. Now listen, this is a big statement I'm going to make, and I'll say it without any hesitation. If the people of God in America, forget your Republican Democratic status a minute. If the people of God all over this country, I don't care if it's only 15 million people out of 300 plus million. If the people of God would humble themselves and pray, and seek the face of God like we've never sought Him before and turn from our wicked ways, there is absolutely no doubt from the Word of God that God would forgive us and He'd heal this land. I believe that God ordained this country to be when He did, a friend and a helper of Israel. And He's blessed us for years. Most of us grew up, this is so shocking to most of us, even though here compared to the Middle East, here it's relatively still very peaceful and nice. But we grew up in a time where you could do or say anything you wanted to do. You could be anything you wanted to be and we just go to church when you feel like it. And we're all Christians. You got a better job when I was a kid if you were a Christian and church goer. Those things are changing rapidly. God had blessed us and he kept his blessing on us for a long time. But he says, if you'll seek my face and pray, humble yourselves and turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive your sin and heal your land. Now what I want you to know, if you read that whole chapter... Let me give you a little synopsis of what happened because this is a, I think this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Solomon, had that's King David's son. Solomon had just finished building the first mighty temple that was ever made. You've heard of the temple of God and the holy place and the holy of holies. And, and you, you've heard of all the sacrifices that were made and how the priests would go in and they would slaughter all these animals and the blood was spilled and that's what brought the, re the remission of sins for the people. And see, listen, as we go through this, when Jesus died on the cross, that blood covered all of your sin. That's how it works. That's how you get saved. That blood covered all of your sin, but it covers it to take it away from your conscience and to take it away from your guilt. And you still have to confess that sin. You need to confess that sin every day. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, then he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. 1 John 1, 9. But you have to confess it. Well, back then, they didn't have Jesus who did that. Now, Jesus' blood is always good. Because, you see, if, if I, the door pops loose from my bungee cord because the wind takes a big like it's trying to do, and it pops over and hits me on the elbow and hits my funny bone, and I think a bad thought, the blood is already forgiven me, and I have to, all I have to still have to do is I say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me not to do that anymore. Help me to get my thoughts under control. 
forgive me, and it's forgiven just like that. Before that, before Jesus came, they had to keep cutting these animals up and spilling the blood, and each time they would sin, there had to be a remission made for their sins. Well, they come up and they built this big, beautiful temple, and it's finished now. It was one of the greatest wonders on earth. And the Bible said, tells us all through chapter 6 of Second Chronicles here how Samuel, uh, Solomon prayed, and he prayed this beautiful prayer, listen, about the temple. But do you know, have you read your New Testament? Do you know the Word of God? What is the temple today? The temple is God's people. We are where the Holy Spirit abides. When we get together, there's just enough people, maybe 15, 16 people in this church. There's enough of us if we were all walking in the knowledge and in the faith that we're filled with the Holy Spirit of God. There'd be enough power and enough righteousness pulled together in this building to influence the whole county, if not the state of Texas. Where two or more are gathered in my name, we don't even know what that means. But we're learning it. We're learning it. They built this temple, and when he would refer to it in his prayers, he said, Lord God. Now, he's talking about the temple, but I want you to think of us today in America. Think of yourself right where you're sitting. You're a Christian. Your friends know you're a Christian. You're a child of God. Hopefully, you're here in our church. Maybe you're watching online and you would be at church, but you couldn't be somewhere today. When he's praying this prayer, he's praying about the temple with stones and bricks and mortar. But today, he's talking about us. And he says, Lord, if your people are out and they're in battle and they're getting beat and they realize that they need your help, let them look toward this temple and believe and hear them from heaven and send them help. And that was going to happen. He says... If someone sins and they fall out of grace with you, let them look toward that temple and believe and you'll hear them and forgive their sin. That's what he was saying all through this prayer. He's praying that to God. Today, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be to where if somebody's lost, their life's falling apart, they look at you and they say, I need to talk to her. I need to talk to her. She's got her life. She, she's a child of God. Not just she's a Christian, she goes to church. I know that she's a woman of God. I need to talk to her. I need her to pray for me. That's, we're the temple of God now. And that's what he was praying. And he prays this prayer and he goes through all these different scenarios. If your children are out in battle and they're fighting one of these wars, Lord, and the, and the enemy starts to overcome them, let them look toward this temple. Just look in the direction of this temple. That's the faith they had. Just like Jesus told Nicodemus, I must be lifted up as Moses held up the serpent in the wilderness. They just looked at that serpent on a pole and believed and they were healed. You just look in the direction of the temple and God will hear. And, he, and, and your faith is in that, that God is there and he's going to forgive you and he does. That's us. That's the children of God today. Not for us to be worried, for us to be the temple so others can look to us and find encouragement. And then he gets to the end of the prayer. And he's been praying this awesome prayer about this new temple. And here's what happened on Pentecost to the children of God. When this new temple was ordained. The, the first temple, he just finished the prayer. And it's so much like second chapter of Acts Pentecost. You familiar? You remember that? It's when the children of Israel, or the, the, not just the children of Israel, the new believers in Jesus Christ, Jesus had arisen from the dead. It, it showed himself to them. They all saw that he was alive, and he ascends into heaven. He says, you go to Jerusalem and wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. I've got you. You're my temple, Jesus says. You're my temple. I've got you all built. You're set together. Now you go sit at Jerusalem, and you wait. Wait until the Father sends his promise. Well, they just finished the temple, and boy, Solomon prayed his prayer, and he prayed to Almighty God, and it says in chapter 7, verse 1, now when Solomon, listen carefully to this child of God, because this is what happened in the second chapter of Acts, and it happens to you this morning if you'll let it. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and they worshipped and praised the Lord saying, He is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Now think of that just a minute. I dare say, 
that if we were standing here today and fire fell down from heaven and started consuming things right in front of us and we knew that it was the power of God, we'd fall on our face and we'd worship, but would we be saying God is good? Or would we be saying, please don't destroy me. Oh, God, I'm unholy. Why did they say God is good? How could they, how could they, how could they not be terrified at their own state? Simple. Because the fire had just consumed their sin offerings that was all over the altar. And they knew it. Many of them had led their sheep in. They'd taken their bulls and, and they were all slaughtered. In the, and God had just accepted their offering. And when they saw the presence of God come down and the glory filled that temple, it wasn't even a fearful thing so much as they were overwhelmed at how good God is. Have you experienced the fire of Jesus' life coming down and consuming your offering? Have you made an offering to Him? Where He consumes that offering and says, All of your sin is gone. Where you can, in worship, on your face say, God is good and His mercy endures forever. Let me tell you something. That's a trick question. Because the answer for everybody that's actually saved should be yes. Do you worship? Do you worship him? I suggest we don't really worship very much at all. Not God. We worship. Think of what it is that gives you the most pleasure, that you most enjoy, that you give your time to every day. That. I'm not picking on you. I'm just I'm trying to wake you up. That's your worship. That's what you worship. If it's a TV show, if it's a meal, if it's going home and kissing your wife or your husband, they may be what's getting all your worship. We come to church once or twice a week, and we get carried away. We get emotionally high, and we worship the Lord, but you're not worshiping him. You're paying him homage. You worship something that you worship. You can, listen, think of this just in your own words. And, and this is just self-evaluation. I, I just got this this morning. You worship what you worship, what you love. You can get carried away and say, Oh, God, you're good. And you can get chill bumps and the music can be so good. And everybody be standing up and waving their hands in the air. And you can be caught up in a wonderful feeling. You can do that at an Eric Clapton concert, though. Did you realize that? But to worship him. When you. I love Sally. And when I see her. It makes me smile inside. When she's getting up in the morning. I don't care what she looks like in her hair. I'm just glad to see her. Me and Ginger both want to just get her kisses and everything. It doesn't matter. That's what I'm looking forward to. And so for me to love her. And me to pour myself out toward her. It's an easy thing. Because it's an always thing. That's the only way worship can be really worship. And, and there's nothing better if, if you're, what is it, I, I always grew up in music, I was a big fan of music. If you really love a song, you find a song and you really love it, and every time you listen to it, it's like, oh man, I just feel it. I feel this song, I want to turn it louder, I want to get my headphones turned loud. What do you want to do? You want somebody that you love to hear that song too, don't you? You want them to listen to it with you. If you start playing it for them, they start talking, you're like, listen, listen, you're not listening. You want them to pay attention and listen. That's where worship comes into play. That's what God's wanting from us. We've got to experience him to truly be able to worship him. Sort of. In another way, you've got to worship him to be able to truly experience him. Why? How can that be, Terry? Because we walk by faith. How many times I've said, and I'll tell you over and over and over, in order to experience the things of God, sometimes you have to start Walking in them before you feel it. That's walking by faith. I've told you many times, and I'm going to tell you this again. Somebody needs to hear it this morning. You can be feeling like you're at the end of your road. Everything's going wrong. Now I'm getting a scratchy feeling in the back of my throat. I think I'm getting a fever. I don't feel good. I don't feel like going to work tomorrow. And if I don't go, nothing will get done. This is horrible. But how many times I've told you, and this is so true, you start telling that mouth, stop confessing that. 
Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you've given me life. You've given me breath, and I bless you. I praise you, Lord. If I'm sick, I'm going to praise you while I'm sick. If this all breaks down on me, I'm going to praise you while it's breaking down on me. And you keep saying that, and you keep using your mouth for what it's meant for rather than poking a biscuit in it. You keep using that mouth to bless the Lord, and you know what will happen? Do you know what will happen? Your, your spirit will start to follow along to those words. Death and life in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 14, 21. Death and life in the power of the tongue. So start to speak it. Start to walk, start to say, Lord, listen, this sounds funny. You may be cold. You may be cold as ice as a child of God today. But I'm telling you, but you're thinking, I wish I wasn't, I wish I wasn't, I wish I need. I want the peace he's talking about. Then you start using that mouth. Praise you, Lord. Lord, you're great. You're big. Stop talking to God about how big your mountain is. How's that go? Start talking to that mountain about how big your God is. You get in your car, you start driving, you say, Lord, I trust you. You've got me. Everything going wrong that could go wrong. And if my friends heard me saying this, they'd think I'm nuts. Maybe I am, but I'm trusting you. You're bigger than my problems. And I trust you. Confession. Confessing with your mouth. But I don't really trust him. Start saying it anyway and start following what you're saying. If you tell yourself you can't do anything right today, you're going to have a hard time making anything work. We are people of faith. That's what we walk by. Confession with your mouth will bring you back around. Repentance. As we just saw, the funny thing that ties this together, these passages where we just read 1 and 2, that's just before 14 that we read where if my people who are called by my name. They had just dedicated this temple to God. So this is just like us after the second chapter of Acts. God had set his people up in Jerusalem, and then he sent down the tongues, cloven tongues of fire, and they rested on them, and they spoke in different tongues. And the Spirit of God filled them. And Peter, who just a few weeks earlier denied even knowing Jesus, stood up in the face of the very people that wanted to kill him and told them all that Jesus was alive. And he preached the gospel to them. And about 3,000 people got saved and stayed walking the course, the Bible tells us. He was changed. Listen, here's what I want you to get your head around. This is a big thing to get your head around. That happened to you too, if you're a child of God. If you ever gave your life to Jesus, well, Terry, I don't feel like that. I, I wish I was. I mean, it's, it's, I understand what you're saying, and that sounds good, but I'm just not like that. I'm not a religious person. I'm not like you to go out and talk. Stop it. Stop it. Poke something in there and stop that mouth. Get to yourself and say, Lord, I don't know what you made me for. I don't know, I, I, I'm not a speaker, I can't get up in front of people and talk, but I know you put your Holy Spirit in me, the Bible says you did, and I know I spent too many hours of my day worrying, and I spent too many hours fearing, and I don't spend enough time praying, so Lord, I'm asking you, turn me around. Turn me around, because the Bible says you already did. You see, what you've got to understand, you are that temple and the Holy Ghost in all of his power and strength is in you. He's resting in you. And all you have to do is start acknowledging that, start acknowledging it and speaking it so and believing it. It's faith. It's your faith. You've got to hold on to your faith. You've got to stop thinking, what in the world is going to happen with this election? How is this going to wind out? And you've got to come around to saying, God, you know what's going to happen. What you're doing may be a punishment on us. We may have been through punishment for the last 10 or 15 years because we've turned our back on you, because we've denied you. It may or may not be. I don't know. Whatever you're doing, I know one thing. I know one thing. All things will work together for the good of me because I love you and I'm called by your name. You gotta stop worrying. You gotta stop fearing. Well, Terry, that's easy to say. So is this. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not worried anymore. Say it. Say those words. Stop saying, I'm an addict. I know I can't stop drinking. I know and the devil says, That's right, that's right. You're doing good. Keep talking, kid. Stop it. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You're a child of the most high God. 
You are born again. We talked about this last night, too, and I want to share it again with you, just even if you heard it last night. you got to understand, when you came to Jesus Christ, what happened? Just like when old Terry was born, February 26, 1959, a new life started. And look what it turned into. But you know what? When I was born again, same thing. Something was born that's still alive and still going to differences. This one will never die. This thing's going to lay down someday. But I had a new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, a new creation. All the old things are gone. It's supposed to be. They're not in our lives. But by faith, he said they are, so we're supposed to take that. Behold, all things are new. Listen to me, child of God. I don't care if you're a truck driver, always got half a bag of red man in your jaw. You only get home twice, three times a month, and all you do is listen to Hank Williams on the radio. I'm telling you, God has a holy man of God desiring to grow up through you. What's it going to look like? I don't know. It's not for other people to determine. They'll see it, but it's not their expectations, whether you're going to be a preacher, you're going to be a missionary, or go off to Africa and work with the mission. We get these preconceived notions. All you need to do is say, here I am, Lord. You're the potter, I'm just the clay, but I know that you, you made me for more than this. You made me for more than this. I go through every day with more questions than I have answers, Lord, and yet you live in me. You're made for more than that. Come on, rise up. Rise up and know it. God is doing something. If you're over 40 years old, you know that. I say 40 because most people that are under that, all they know is what they've seen for the last 30 years. But if you're 40 or older, you know God is doing something in this world and in this nation right now. And it's calling for us. It's calling for the children of God to not just to rise up, but listen, I'm going to say this. It needs to be said. It's God is calling us to come back. To come back. But everything is forward. Everything's forward. Boy, we're progressing. We're, we're about to progress ourselves into oblivion. We're about to progress ourselves into no more truck drivers, automatic trucks. About to progress ourselves into cars we don't even drive. They drive themselves. We progress ourselves into the teller that can't count change back for a 10. God's saying, come back to what's real. Just a quick example. I love... I love contemporary Christian music. Sally and I made our career in it. We love Christian music contemporary. But there's a place for the hymns. These songs got three, some of them got 300 years on them that people have been getting saved and hearing the truth of the Word of God in them. And every year there's a song in contemporary music good enough to go in there and to be added among them from time to time. But we have songs. That's why we stick with them here at this church. When we're together on Bible studies, we sing some of the newer songs together sometimes. But you're not going to beat the old rugged cross. You're not going to beat How Great Thou Art. Get, those are songs that God gave us. We have, we've given up everything to make it new and fresh so we can get the young people. And the young people are just laughing at us. They want to see something real. And they're looking everywhere for it. And they're seeing the older people just doing anything they can, change everything, get bigger screens, a new carpet with kids like this color, kids like this color. Kids want to see something real. And God is real. We've walked away from him. He says, come back. Come back to me. Turn from your wicked ways. Seek my face. And I'll heal your land. Again, God, if you're a child of his, he lives in you. Ephesians 3.19, the fullness of God is in you. I think it's verse, uh, probably 16 or 17 in that same passage where it says, he, he prays that you'll know the width and the breadth and the depth and the height and the, to know the love of Christ that's beyond knowledge so that Christ would dwell in your heart by faith. He lives in you. He lives in you right now, today. You may not have been to church in 20, 30 years. You may have just quit going to church because of the COVID or something else got you turned off and you quit going. Don't do that. Find somewhere and keep closeness to God. Keep close to the roots. The Spirit of God has been placed in you and God's calling His people 
to rise up. I believe, and I don't know what's going to happen. I can't put my finger on it. But man, we're getting indications, and we're being told things, and we're seeing things, that there could be some, some things happen in our society in the next seven days that will literally rock our world, like we haven't already. I know there's already talk about the whole nation being locked down at one time. Things we never even imagined. We're in a small town in West Texas. We haven't seen a whole lot of the protest and violence, but don't think it's not there. But we need to be above these things. And I'm pleading with you this morning, wherever you are, if you're sitting in jail, if you're in a nursing home, if you're in a Stripes convenience store working with the radio on, God is calling you. But listen, please hear this. It's not an automatic thing. Seek my face. Humble yourself. Seek my face and pray. Don't be afraid. Too proud. Get on your knees. Go home and get down on your knees before God. Humble yourself before God and He will exalt you. Start realizing. Listen, if you want to get into heaven, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, if you want to get into heaven, you've got to understand you cannot take this flesh and blood in. It won't go there. It's not going to get in. Only the Spirit. So unless God is living in you, you're not going. Now, if God's living in you, how are you going to go to that movie? How are you going to go to that R-rated movie and sit there and watch it with somebody? God's in you. I'm certain. I'm certain of most of these things that if Jesus were standing beside you, close enough you could feel his breath, you wouldn't tell that joke you're about to tell. I feel certain in my heart that you wouldn't go home and watch that one TV show you watch every week with all the filth and sex in it if you knew Jesus were sitting at your table with you. We've got to start. See, we've got to change our mindset. That's repenting. That's repentance. We, we've, that's become a bad word. People don't want to hear that. Anything in our society that doesn't make me feel better about me, I don't want none of it. I don't want to hear it. But we have to. We have to. We're the children of God. We've got to stop living by this outer thing and start living by the inner thing because that's what's going to live forever. 1 Corinthians 4.18. 2 Corinthians 4.18. While now we focus on the things that aren't seen. Because the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are unseen are eternal. We have to shift our thinking. We have to shift our focus. This coming week, we don't know what's happening. We're not certain of what's going to happen next week. We're not certain of what's going to happen in the next year. We don't know what's going to happen today. But you can know beyond a reasonable doubt, you can know beyond any doubt, that it's all working for your good. If you love him, don't say you love him if you don't obey him. John said that doesn't work. He says you're a liar. First John. But obey him and start to speak. Start to speak with your mouth. Take your husbands and wives. As you get in the truck, one of you says something, I, we're going to run out of gas. Don't say that. We're going to go get some gas. And if we run out of gas, God saw it beforehand and he's got a plan for us. Crazy? Yeah. Crazy in the flesh. But start speaking your faith and start getting your heart and your hands wrapped around God because he's the only anchor that's going to hold you still in the storms ahead. And do you realize, even if Terry's predictions here, the meek ones that I've made, if they're all wrong and things get better and better and we just wind up with utopia here on earth, you know you're still going to die for long. You're still going to need what I'm talking to you about. Someone's got to help us across that river. Someone's got to accompany us. And if I go away... I will come again for you so that where I am, you may be also, John 14, 1. My Father's house are many mansions. The word this morning, rise up, child of God. See who you are. All of this, do you understand all of these things I'm talking about, these things, it's kind of, well, it's, 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 it's unseen. I don't, I don't really know how to get my hands around it, Terry, but some, it kind of resonates within me. I know what you're saying. I, I just, 
Do you realize all of these crazy, mysterious things I'm talking about are described right here? They're very plainly described. That's why you need Bible study. That's why you need understanding. They're all here, and they were all paid for. This, th what I'm talking to you about, that's what Jesus died for. So that your sin could always be forgiven. And so that you could always come boldly before his throne. As we said last night, not walking in like this. Walking in knowing you can go. Like an emergency room. I know I can go there. They're, gonna, they're not going to turn me away. They know, that I'm not, they know that I'm not radioactive. They know that I don't have guns and trying to hurt anybody. They're going to let me in. That's the throne room of God when you're his child. He let Jesus die on the cross and suffer all of the shame and abandonment that he did so that we could have the things I'm talking to you about this morning. And here's the funny thing about it. For those of you who are born again, you've had it all this time. You've had this very thing all your, time, all this, all your life. Isn't it time you start to walk in it? The victory is yours. That's why we sing victory in Jesus every time we close the service. The victory is already yours. But it's only going to do you any good if you reach out and take it. And you start confessing with your mouth. Speaking it. Believing it. Walking in it. And stopping the things you know you shouldn't be doing. You've got to stop doing the things that you know are wrong. We're above that. We're the children of God. And Father, I thank you that you saw us today. You saw all of this before the day even came about. You made provision for us, Lord. No matter what we were into just last night, some people still have a hangover, maybe it's still a little drunk from last night. You knew that. You saw it. But you made provision for our atonement right now this morning. And we can start walking now in the victory and the peace that passes understanding. And we thank you that it's your desire that we do. I receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, contact us on Facebook. I'll get back with you. Join us again next week. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Stand if you would. I look around this room and I see, to the best of my knowledge, everybody here has accepted Christ. You've got your faith in Jesus. Just hear the word this morning. You have dynamite in your spirit. You can't be defeated. You can't be defeated. We sense it all the time. I know right now Brother Kenneth's going through a hard time. More than most people. And I know Karen is battling a whole lot right now with her health and pain. I know other people in here have Simona. Got issues you're fighting and you're battling, but you can't be defeated. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. But you've got to speak it. You've got to believe it. You've got to know that. Because you see, we're all, this thing we're living in, we're all going to die. They're all going to lay down. Some of us are going to have a nice, easy way of going through. Some of us are going to have a horrible time. Paul, what did he say? I've learned how to be content in whatever state I'm in. If I have a lot and I'm doing good and I'm feeling good, fine. I'll, I'll, because I'm walking in the Spirit. If it's all falling down on me and they've got me chained up in another dungeon, which was in most of the short epistles, that's fine too. That's fine too because I know where I'm going. Guys, I'm telling you, when <laughs> that's you. That's already you. And when you get your heart and your mind wrapped around that and your faith won't let you turn loose of it again, listen, you can't be defeated. You'll be saying an old Pentecostal song, cannot be defeated and I will not quit. I like that. But it all comes with your faith. So reach out and take hold of it this morning. Is there anybody that needs to make a confession, needs to make a profession of faith, anything that you want to do before we close? All right. Bible study starts at 6. I hope that you'll come back for that. This has been really good. We're in uh, 2 Samuel. As Sally was saying, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 2. So I uh, hope that you'll join us for that and whatever else the Lord puts on our hearts. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift 
Lord, if we live to be a million years old and we sought you every day and we spent hours on our face and in your word, we could still never even uncover the magnitude of this gift. For your holy, sinless son to hang on a cross, shamed in front of the world, and take all our sin. Lord, it's not just so we can come to church now and then be a Christian. You bought things for us that are mystery. And we want to know them. Lord, we want to walk in them. I want to get there someday and know that I have experienced everything Jesus died for me to experience. And I want to hear, well done. And Lord, you know the passion in my heart is that everyone in the sound of my voice have that same hunger and that same desire. Prepare us, Lord, for the coming days, the coming weeks, the coming months. Help us to hold our tongue, Lord, against things that aren't fruitful. Help us remember, Lord, that even those on the other side of political parties that we disagree with, they lay down at night in bed and they worry and their hearts break. Whether their president is being elected or not. Lord, we're all people. And we are your temple that they're to look at and see life. Help them to never see hatred or bitterness coming out of our eyes. We humble ourselves and submit ourselves to you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you, just pray this prayer with me in your heart, y'all. Holy Spirit, we ask you to make us so aware of your presence. Lord, help us to see others around us as Jesus did. To not see what they're saying or what they're doing or how they're coming against me, but to see their heart. And to break for them. And to be a temple. So that they can look to me and see that there is a living God that loves them. And Lord we worship you. We worship you. You are good. And your mercy is everlasting. Lord how many years, how many decades did I walk in sin. Embarrassing your name. Saying things that I shouldn't say. Watching things I shouldn't watch. Doing things I shouldn't do. And you still love me. And you held your hand out to me. I thank you for your patience that never ends. We worship you, Lord, and we bless you. I ask you to awaken us all. Open our hearts and open our eyes. Wake us up, Lord, to realize how much you love us and how much you have prepared waiting for us to just reach out by faith and take right now. And as we do, may Christ receive so much glory. Before you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. That makes me think the, uh, the little parable that we told here a while back that Jesus told. That's good. You just keep playing. Where uh, the father went to the, the orchard. No, that's good. Where the, where the father went to the orchard and he looked at the tree and he said, This tree hasn't produced in three years. Cut it down. But the helper, which was Jesus, said, Father, let's give it one more year and let me break the dirt up around it and let me fertilize it. And then if it doesn't bear fruit, that's who we have in our corner today. He may be looking at you saying, been 40 years they've been walking in the flesh. Done with them. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. That's what I hung on the cross for, Lord. Let's give them one more chance. They're going to go to church at JCBC Sunday morning. Let them give them another chance. That's the Lord we have. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Stop before I start preaching again.